Hi everybody, I'm trying something a little different. Um, ever since I learned a little bit more about using my cell phone, you might see me using it a little bit more. I do still want to continue to, um, you know, use my webcam in the living room when it's quieter and the kids are in bed, but I thought I would get out for just a minute. It's a little cold, but the car's been running for a little while, so I just turned it off. And reach out to you all about something I had prayed for yesterday that uh, was an answer to prayer today. Yesterday I had uh, was in the middle of praying and the Lord uh, told me to ask him because I'd stopped asking him um, and I asked him specifically uh, for more dreams and I you know I was I was afraid to ask him before because well not really afraid just I didn't want to seek validation in the wrong places. But I had stopped receiving as much from him in that way. And I had told him yesterday, Lord, if um, you're done speaking to me that way, that's okay. But if you um, would like to keep giving me dreams, then I will gladly share them. And uh, yeah, I just felt the need to actually ask because I just haven't been. So, lo and behold, last night I had a dream, and I wanted to share it with you. Um, it was very symbolic, had a lot of symbology in it, and as I woke up from the dream, I felt the Lord saying, um, put down, you know, whatever you're doing, because when I woke up, I went to check my phone, he said, just stop and think about this dream. A lot of times when the Lord speaks to me about a dream, that's what he does. He'll tell me to stop. In the morning when I first wake up to just stop for a second and think about the details of the dream and he'll kind of give them all back to me and then he will give me the meaning for the a lot of the times not all the time all at once but a lot of the time he'll give me the meaning slowly throughout the day and um, show me you know little bits and pieces of the dream and what they meant so that's what happened this morning and I remembered after he gave me um, the meaning of the symbology of the dream, I remembered what I'd prayed yesterday. So with that being said, I'll go ahead and share the dream because I'm on a cell phone and I don't really want this to go too long. But um, I dreamt that I was on a train with a bunch of other people, but we were sitting in a train like depot. And I was, we knew where we were going. Um, we were going west, we were going left. And there was another train I could see out my window of people. Um, I could see the cars and they were gonna go east and I heard the word Russia. So I instinctively knew they were going to Russia. I'll explain the significance of this. It may not be what you think it means initially. So they were gonna go east and they were just starting to move. The train cars were just starting to move out to my right. And I could see people looking down and some of them looked oblivious. Um, most of them weren't, they weren't even paying attention to the fact that their car was moving, their heads were down and you know, they just, they just looked blank. Their faces looked blank. And for some reason I felt like I should wave to them and get their attention and smile at them. And, uh, so I did, I started waving at them and as their car started picking up speed, more and more people started looking out their windows and some of them, um, looked out their window and didn't see me. Some of them kept their heads down and some of them smiled and waved back. And, uh, and I will get to the, the symbology of that in a minute. So then my dream changed. They, they, they left and, um, they seemed to know where they were going. I mean, they seemed to not know where they were going. I knew where they were going. And I had this feeling that they were, um, if I got their attention, that some of them might get off of the, um, they might get off of the train later at another depot and come back our direction. So, um, I believe that these were, we were in a holding pattern waiting for the rapture. We're going west. We're going, we were going the other direction they were going. Um, Russia represents um, danger, especially with the headlines right now. We don't know what's going to happen with Russia, but we know they're a big player. And in this sense, the people that had their heads down weren't aware of where they were headed. Um, the people that... I waved to and smiled to. There were people that I was trying to get their attention about the times that we're living in. And I was waving to get their attention, but I was smiling because 
um, where to win people over. The gospel is the good news. And if we are, you know, uh, angry with people or we're depressed all the time or whatever, and our countenance is down and we're not excited about the gospel, it's not attractive because the rest of the world is facing um, hopelessness and they want to know where they can receive hope. And if our faces, our countenance, and our lives are not pointing towards the hope of Christ, then they're not going to see that. So I think that's why I smiled. Um, the fact they're going east um, indicates a lot of times in the Bible when someone's going east, they're turning away from the Lord. Um, Cain went east out of Eden towards Canaan. And um, a lot of the enemies of Israel were from their east. So not only is going towards the east symbolic of going away from the Lord in a lot of cases in the Bible, but a lot of the enemies of the Lord were coming out of the east. So I think that's important. I don't know that it's necessarily Russia that we're heading towards, but Russia represents danger and the unknown. Um, another thing about the unknown is that we can know about the past, we can know about the present, but we don't know about the future. So I believe um, Russia indicates the future. It, re it indicates the unknown or represents the unknown. Uh, like I said, some people were receiving the truth. They were recognizing it. And those are seeds that we're planting right now. They may or may not get off at the next depot and turn around and repent and go the other direction um, before um, we depart. Uh, but we're to get grow, you know, we're to spread that word. We're to spread the gospel while we can. And some of them may turn around and repent and come the other direction. And some of them may be oblivious all the way till um, they get to their destination. So the, all the way till they re, they get to danger, they um, have a reality check. So that was that part of the dream. So I'm kind of breaking up in half because then I had a second part to the dream that unfolded. And it's not like it was another dream. It just seemed like a continuation of this dream. So I was with a bunch of people. And at first, of course, I had been in the train car, but now we were in this big house, this big building, this big house. And I knew that I was engaged to this man. And um, this is the thing is I'm married to my earthly husband. But in the dream, I had a sense about him that um, I knew he was part of my past. And um, but now I was engaged to someone else and everybody knew that I was engaged to this person. And it was very strange at first. But it was um, so I was walking around looking for him and the room was filled with people who were buzzing about nervously, uh, like they were anticipating something. There was a really nervous energy in the room of people just um, being worried. Um, and it was getting chaotic and noisy in there. And I was starting to feel it. I was starting to feel the effects of it. And so I went around looking for my fiance. And I found him on the front porch sitting down. And he stood up. And as soon as I saw him, I felt peace. But he stood up and I, he hugged me and he was really tall and he had a beard and he was very, very tall. I came up to like his chest. I'm about 5'7", but I came up to maybe his heart. And uh, he was well above me and he had a beard and he was kind of thin, but he was tall. And he was, um, he hugged me and I hugged him back and then he said something. And I couldn't hear what he said. And, um... By this point, we had walked into the, ho the house and it was still very loud in there and I couldn't hear what he said. And he, I looked up at him and I looked at his mouth. I was watching his mouth and I was kind of like leaning in to hear what he was saying. He was very soft spoken. And um, then I said, hold on. So I kind of heard him and, um, but I wanted to hear him even more clearly. So I asked him to sit down. And when he did, his legs came way out. He had a huge lap. I climbed into his lap, almost like a child. And I sat in his lap. And then I could, I was more face to face with him. I was closer to him and I could hear him better. And just being with him calmed me down and just gave me peace. And I think you can probably figure out where this is all going, sort of. Um, the house that we were in, I believe, is where we're at right now. It's chaotic. The world is chaotic. The headlines are chaotic. Uh, there's a lot of fear, even amongst um, believers. Um, and the conversations were kind of dizzying. They made me nervous. And that can easily happen if we immerse ourselves in um, the headlines. And so when I went looking for this man, I was looking for my fiance. And there's a reason um, that he was my fiance. Because he was, I believe, like a 
a representation of Jesus in the Holy Spirit in one. And I was looking for him. So I didn't find him in the noise. I found him still on the premises because he hasn't left the world. He has not left us and he will not. But he was out where it was quiet and surpri not surprisingly, he was on the front porch of our home and he was out where it was peaceful. So I found him in a quiet place and he, that's where you're going to find him. You're going to find, um, it's going to be easier to hear someone in, in a quiet place. You're going to hear the word, you're going to hear the Lord speaking to you in a quiet place. Now he was tall and I found myself looking up to him, looking up at his mouth. And there is a reason for that. Um, because when I was looking at his mouth, the word, the Lord says, um, the word was God, and the word was with God. And he spoke and the world became into existence. And also at Armageddon, when he speaks, he will decimate his enemy. All he has to do is speak. So he's speaking. What is he speaking? He's speaking the word of God, the scripture. And so what I was doing when I was looking at his, um, his mouth form, the words is I was actually reading the word. And so when we are reading the word, we're going to hear him and then we're going to hear him more clearly. So we can compare what we think he says to what he's actually, he's, he's saying in his word. And so when I asked him to sit down so I could sit in his lap, that is an indicator that I wanted to get into his presence in a more intimate way and get into a place with him where we, I could hear him more clearly and I could um, relax and be comforted by him in his embrace. And that's what he wants from us. That's exactly what he wants from us is to just find a quiet place and get there with him. And he will begin to speak and you'll be able to hear him even more clearly because once I was in his lap, I heard him even more clearly. So I just wanted to share that with you. I thought it was mind-blowingly cool to have a dream like that. And, um, you know, the Lord just kind of revealed it little by little by little, step by step. I think the very last thing that was pieced together was reading um, the words coming out of his mouth. And I immediately hit me like a ton of bricks. Reading the word, reading the word of God. It's that simple. Um, don't know why I didn't think of it before. But I just wanted to share that with you guys because I thought it was an awesome dream. And I just want to pray real quick before I let you guys go. Father God, you are so awesome in the way that you speak to each and every one of us individually and in unique ways. Lord, we praise you for you are holy and you are coming for your children. You're coming for your bride, Lord. You're coming for us, Lord. We are engaged and one day soon we'll be at the wedding party. We will be at the wedding of the Lamb. So Lord, I just pray that you would instill hope into every heart here that's listening. Father, if they do not know Jesus, Lord, the one and only Son of God who came to the earth, lived a perfect life in our place, died in our place for our sins, past, present, and future, um, was risen from the grave three days later, and now, Lord God, we can be with him if we believe on him and believe on what he did at the cross, Lord. I pray if they don't know that, that they know it now, Lord God, and that they would receive that message today, Lord God, and Lord, that they would turn away, repent from what they're doing and go the other direction. And that simply means believing on what Jesus did on the cross for them. I pray, Lord, if they're on that train track going east, Lord God, they're going to get off at the next depot and they're going to come back the other direction, going to go west and um, be ready because, Lord, I know we're in a holding pattern. Give us patience as we wait, Lord. And while we wait, I pray that we would look Lord God, to um, get away, steal away for some quiet time with you and get away from the noise, Lord. Learn to read the words coming out of your mouth. Read the word of God. I thank you, Lord, for your love for us and um, that you long to be with us. You just long for us to fellowship with you and Lord, and be in a place where we can warn others by getting their attention and be, by, um, you said it's, it's the kindness of God that brings two men to repentance. So I pray that we would be attractive, Lord. We would be salt and light to the world around us in a dark place. I praise you for all that you are, Lord God. You are worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Have a wonderful rest of your weekend, guys. Love you guys. And if you have any prayer requests, put them in the comments below. God bless you guys. Maranatha.